This ain't an easy thing. Balancing a video game is not something that you can just do with a snap of a finger, especially a game like Overwatch. Any title that has multiple characters with things like different health pools, different damage values, different weapons, different abilities, and different strengths and weaknesses, once you add more and more of those, reaching this balance nirvana, this ideal balance state, seems kind of nay impossible if you really sit down to think about it. And we've seen the ramifications of that ourselves as players of of Overwatch. Ever since this game launched, it's been constant. Every couple of weeks, at least every month, big balance changes come through. Some of them are major, like the overhauls we saw to characters like Symmetra and Bastion, and some of them are minor, like the tweaks that we've been seeing for Sombra trying to push her into relevance. But either way, it seems pretty obvious that balancing games like this, it's a tough job. Recently, Jeff Kaplan gave us some insight as to how Blizzard approaches balancing this game. He was asked the question of how they approach balancing heroes, more specifically how it is they decide which aspects of characters they should be nerfing or buffing. His response was, I've always described our approach as the triangle. I feel like there are three key factors that guide us. The players, statistics, and us, our own feelings as players. It's very rare that all three of these factors align. Often we have to ignore one or two and make a change. I think the overhaul to Symmetra was a good example. According to the stats, she was fine, but both players and we agreed that she felt underwhelming. We made changes to make her more fun to play in spite of the stats telling us that she was fine. So this is a great example of where statistics alone aren't enough. Clearly, the stats were telling them, I mean, I remember this conversation prior to the Symmetra overhaul. Symmetra had one of the highest win percentages in the game. When she was picked, there was a higher chance of winning than almost any other hero. And yet everyone complained that Symmetra sucks and she wasn't good enough. And again, Bastion as well. Even with the stats saying one thing, player feelings and the developer intuition made them do complete overhauls to both of those heroes. So once Blizzard decides that they want to make a change to any hero, they go through the process. First, they implement it into an internal build, they test it internally, and then if they feel comfortable with that change, they then move it to the PTR for further testing. However, the PTR hasn't been all that helpful. He said, we're always trying big changes to heroes internally. Lots of those never see the light of day or PTR. The player behavior on the PTR is not super helpful for balancing. Average playtime for those who log in is usually around 16 minutes. Most of the time, someone logs in, wants to try the changed hero, and logs out. People don't play traditional comps, they want to try the changed heroes. If they don't get the hero, they leave the match. You have people people who have less than 20 minutes playtime on a hero and then giving feedback based off of one match. Now, clearly, this isn't a great way to balance anything. If people are logging into the PTR, testing these changes for a grand total of 16 minutes, playing for one match, and then giving their input, that's not enough data. By and large, most of the community uproar about changes or about things that need to happen aren't based on actual playtime and evidence, clearly. Nothing more beyond a single match. That's based basically useless. Now this goes back to a problem that I've talked about in the past, and that's namely that people don't try the PTR because they don't care. There's no incentive. You might say the incentive is to help balance test the game and to make hero balance as good as possible. Clearly that's not enough incentive. People don't give a crap. You're going to need to give them more. Reward them with experience while they're PTR playtime and transfer that to the live account. Hell, even reward them with loot boxes. More incentive is clearly needed if they are looking for more balance testing done through the PTR. And that's to say that that even needs to happen. I, I don't necessarily think that that is the case. Push stuff live, see what happens, and then adjust accordingly. We don't really need this in-between phase, because as it is right now, it's basically worthless beyond the bug test. Now, Jeff said that they also have a competitive playtesting team internally with some diamond and above players that helps them to balance things out, but it's a culmination of all these things. They look at the data, they look at player feedback on the forums, and then they just trust their own instincts. And as the title of this video implies, it's not 
an easy thing. But at the same time, I don't think it's something that Blizzard shouldn't strive for. And they are. As we said at the top of this video, they're making tons of changes all the time. Sometimes major, sometimes overhauls to heroes, and a lot of times minor tweaks to try to push characters into more viability. The, the interesting thing is, I don't think that we can ever assume that a game like this will reach this perfect ideal balance. Most games of this nature, with a variety of heroes, a cast of abilities, different health pools, different weapons, all of that, most games never do. Why? Uh, because there are too many variables. This isn't a vanilla shooter with five total weapons in the game and you can balance them all and all players have access to all of them. All players have the same movement speed, the same health pools, the same potential damage. No, this is a very rock, paper, scissors game in its nature. The fact that there are some characters with 150 health and some characters with 600 health should obviously point to the fact that this perfect balance where every hero is ideal in every situation and you could just swap them out at any point, that'll never happen. It's all going to be a matter of them feeling things out, listening to the community, and I guess sticking to what Jeff calls their triangle. Their three factors. The player's feedback, their statistics, and then their own instincts as developers. And that's really all that they can do. We'll never reach this balance utopia. There will never be a situation where every hero is played an equal percentage of the time, and they all have exactly a 50% win rate. There are too many variables, not only within the heroes themselves, but also within the player base. Heroes like Hanzo or McCree or Widowmaker can be absolute gods and destroy entire teams in the hands of amazing players and be complete trash tier and do absolutely nothing in the hands of bad players. Skill variants, character ability variants, all of that means that we're never gonna have a perfect balance. But I'm glad Blizzard is trying, and I'm glad Blizzard, more so than probably any other company that develops a game that I've been a part of that community, they are super open, they communicate, and they, they seem to be very receptive. And I'm glad this is a good start for this game. And it points to hopefully a great future. But let's not begrudge them for not achieving perfect balance because honestly, I don't think that's ever possible in Overwatch. Expect balance patches from now until the servers for Overwatch eventually get shut down. But don't worry, that'll probably never happen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, that's going to do it for me here today. As always, I want to know what you guys think of this video. Love to know your thoughts in the comment section below. Hope you have a good one, and until next time, I'll see you later.